hinder me no Sunday, all you got to do is watch those little kids. If you would, go ahead and stand. If they put the prayer request on the board, pastor's going to come and lead us in prayer. Amen. Aren't you glad prayer works? 
works. We've got many names on the list to hold up in prayer. Sister Couple, Sister Gilmore, Sister Hudson, Sister Markle, Sister Sellers, Sister Wilbanks, the Haitleys, Brother Colin Sellers, Brother Gary Sellers, Sister Christine Sellers' his mother, Brother Tracy Newman, Brother Wayne Fair, Sister Jean Hopkins. My mother, continue to pray for her. Uh, Uncle Joe, let's pray for him. Chris and Terry, uh, Chris Terry and then Carly Hathcock. Uh, they're still, uh, well, Chris is doing pretty good. Carly's going to be in the med for a minimum of eight days. I just left there a few minutes ago. Uh, very uh, Facing some more surgery. It's a very serious situation on her behalf. Let's pray for them. Also, Dorothy Howell, let's pray for her. I know there's many other needs. God knows them. You have one tonight, slip your hand up. You believe God believe, knows what you're talking about? If you believe that tonight, let's pray for this service and let's take these needs to Him. Lord, we're so thankful for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for being our God. Thank you, Lord, that you're a prayer answerer. God, there's nothing that you cannot do. I ask that you reach down and minister in each one of these needs. Show your power, show your abilities. Let your glory reach down to each request. Lord, you know what each uplifted hand represented. You know the hearts of every person that's here. God, I take, ask that you take this service tonight and let it be covered with your anointing. Use me, oh God, to speak the word of God, to preach the anointing power of God. God, I ask that you just anoint every song that will be sang, everything that will be done, let it be according to your will. trust you. We believe, God, that you're going to continue to do great things. Lord, we praise you for every prayer that's been answered, every touch that's been given. We praise you for it tonight. God, we praise you for what we felt here this morning. Just meet with us again. For this we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Heaven's Journey is going to come and sing. While they're coming to sing tonight, I, again, I want to give praise I believe in giving God glory. We request prayer many, many times. Over and over again, you hear the same names. And I'm not against that because prayer works. But I think God deserves some praise as well. And tonight, I want us to give God another praise that Mr. Allen's story is cancer-free. No more cancer. I'm telling you, folks, we can't praise him enough. Every time you bring a need to God, go back to some of these prayers that's been answered. Go back and remind yourself of some of the needs that has been met. Go back and look at some of the miracles that God has performed and just go ahead and give him praise because he's great and he's greatly to be praised. Let's worship with them tonight. Back three and a half years ago, probably Brother Josh called and wanted to know if we wanted to go to the inauguration of Donald Trump, and that was that would have been a privilege no matter who was getting elected president just to get to go to that. So Brother Josh had got us lined up, and we went up to Washington to uh, see the inauguration. It was, it was amazing. It was something you'll never forget if you ever get to go. But I won't forget the day before, maybe the night before, we were gathered on kind of a little street corner, and uh, someone said, we was asking about the crowd, you know, there's media everywhere and, of course, guards everywhere and cops and all this kind of thing on top of the building everywhere. And it was pretty easy to tell. There was something pretty big fixing to happen. And we asked around, and they said, well, they said that Donald Trump was in this restaurant here fixing to come out of this restaurant. And uh, so we, you know, we gathered up and got as close as we could there to the fence we was wanting to see. And sure enough, here he come out and stood and waved at everybody. And, uh, he had just, he had been elected, but he hadn't been through the inauguration yet. But anyway, he come down and got in the car, Secret Service, and uh, they moved and turned and come right up by where we were standing, probably close to me, to Brother Josh, probably that close, maybe a little closer. And uh, he was in the back seat of the car waving to everybody. And I, I didn't realize that was going to happen. But there was a kind of a lump come up my throat when I seen that. And I thought, you know, Donald Trump shouldn't be giving you a lump in your throat. But it, it was kind of, a, it really was amazing to get to see the president of the United States. I mean, that was, that was pretty amazing to me. My, uh, I, I was 
I was thrilled by it, really, I was. I, and it wouldn't have mattered who the president would have been. It was just an amazing thing to see. But most of all, above anybody else, I want to see the Lord, don't you? And I can't imagine just seeing a person with the status of president, what that would do to you. I can't imagine what seeing the Lord Jesus Christ will do. I just can't. It's going to be phenomenal, right. folks. It, it'll be something just, it's no wonder this that the Bible says that we'll just forever sing praises. Well, you just be in such awe. I mean, it's just it's just going to be an amazing thing. And uh, I love this song that we sing. I don't think Boo and them likes it too well. It says it's kind of mundane sometimes. But it's not mundane to me. This song, most of all, it says things on earth will just, you know, it'll lose its value. It, it'll kind of go away. Uh, but anyway, I want you to listen as we sing an old Magruder song. of earth no longer matter on that morning when skies are split and the saints are called away but most of all just to be among that number the bride of Christ set apart Sunday night service that I like the atmosphere the praise but more than that it's just the opportunity to come into the house of God you know we put so much emphasis on certain camp meetings certain conferences but that same God is here tonight that same burden that you carry around day for day that same God is here to touch that need tonight if you'll just allow him to This world is not a permanent dwelling. We have 
have a better exactly right it's been a little bit since I've since I've uh, heard it but King Herod he come after James and had him executed he done it for clout and he done it for fame and credibility among his peers not shortly after he said I want Peter too so he got Peter and he locked him into jail well I'll give you I guess the cliff notes if you're wondering Peter didn't die because you know man can't stop what God's purpose is for your life but what I can tell you is the angel come to Peter, and he told him, he said, he said, move quickly, get up, and then the chains come off. You know it's up to us in order for the chains to fall off. We have to move first. If he would have never moved, the chains would have never fell off, and he would have died just like James. So what I'm telling you tonight is if you've got something in your life, something that you need moved, you're going to have to step forward and put a little forth in effort tonight in order to receive something tonight. I want a touch from God tonight. I don't know about you, but they're going to cause an atmosphere of praise for us. So let's just worship with them tonight.
praise. They want to just give out to God right now. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, it's great to be in the atmosphere of the Holy Ghost, isn't it? The Holy Ghost can do more in just a few minutes than we can do in a lifetime. Just let God have his way. And he inhabits the praises. He inhabits the praises. He dwells where the praises of his people go for. Amen. Aren't you glad of what you feel in the church house tonight? Anybody disappointed that they come to church? Amen. It's great. It's great. Our ushers are going to come forward and they're going to receive our bus offering. And you know what? God's blessed us. He's blessed us tremendously. And we're going to give into those buses and we're going to get those things done and over with real soon. Amen? I believe that, don't you? They'll pass through tonight. Our ushers will pass as they uh, pass through tonight just giving to the Lord and we will uh, get these buses paid for. Amen? Worship with these men in music as they play tonight. <laughs> sung with such expertise but with anointing and I'd rather have the anointing as expertise but it's great when we have it together and our music I appreciate all of them so much I, I appreciate you you can be seated if you want to for just a moment all of our kids that's going to school I don't care if you're in college or if you're in elementary in kindergarten just come on to the front we're fixing to have prayer all of our people that's going to school we trust the world with our most prized possessions. We're putting them in the hands of people that don't have the same values that we have. They're in a world that's filled with don't care about you and your beliefs. They don't care about your principles. They don't care what the Bible says. None of that matters to them. And we have no choice but to put our kids. I realize all of our kids aren't here tonight, but we're thankful for these that are here. And you know what? We're going to pray for these and not just these, but those that aren't here as well. Because, you know, we need God to protect them physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. We need God's protection on them in every area. We need them to be lights in a very dark world. We need them not to blend in, but to be set apart. Amen. God gave us these children and he's entrusted them as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man. You can come on up here, young lady. Y'all come on. So are children of the youth. We are privileged to have a lot of kids. But you know what? In that privilege becomes a lot of responsibility. Tonight as we pray, 
I don't want it to be just a one time prayer I want us to hold these up on a daily basis I want them to be added to your regular prayer life whether you have a child here up here in front of us or not it's important that we watch God work in their lives the greatest thing that they can ever have I love education. You know I believe in education. I tell everybody, education's important. But the greatest thing they can have is a relationship with God. That's the greatest thing. That's the only thing that's going to matter in the end. Your degrees won't matter when the eastern sky is split. Your diplomas, it ain't going to amount to anything. But your relationship with God is going to carry you further. So tonight as a church, I'd like for you to stand if we've ever needed if we've ever needed God we need God in our children's life for this coming school year God in heaven thank you for our young people thank you for our children thank you Lord for Lord the entrusting us entrusting us with their being blessings that you've given to us through them. Lord, as they embark upon this journey of school and a new school year is about to dawn, I ask God that you reach down and Lord, rekindle the fire of love for you in their life. God, I ask that you just put a hedge of protection about them physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. Let them be a light in a dark and perverse world. Let them resolve, Lord, to serve you all the days of their life. Help them, Lord, not to succumb to the peer pressures of this world. Lord, to stand boldly and proclaim the power of the Holy Ghost and the difference that it makes in their life. Give them the ability, Lord, to withstand against every fiery dart that Satan tries to attack them with. God, let them be anointed when they walk into the school. Let them be anointed in their classrooms. Protect their ears from hearing the nastiness of this world. Protect their minds from being swayed by things that aren't godly. Lord, let them always be in the center of your will. For this, we'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Young people, I I realize for just a few moments, I want you to just stand up here on the front and you can face me. I don't know what key, but I'm going to sing an old song, and y'all can help me sing it. You can just go over to the seat and look back. It looks like you're sitting on the front seat and everybody crowd together. It goes, give me that old-time religion. Time religion. Give me that old-time religion. It's good enough for me. Oh, give me that old-time religion. Give me that old-time religion. That old-time religion. It's good enough. Listen, it will do. For our children, it will do for our children. It will do our 
people. Don't run off. I'm not done. Not by a long shot. Y'all going to help me preach tonight. But don't forget the old time religion that worked for your grandparents. It still works. Amen. It ain't went out of date. It ain't old timey and out of, out of uh, circulation. It still works. Hang on to it. Cherish it. Be proud of who you are. Amen. I need to pick, I'm going to pick different groups tonight. Are you, come here. You stand right here, okay? Come on, you, you're right here. I'm picking groups, y'all. Y'all hang with me. Come on, you over here. Come on, you come right here. Tessa, are you in? Why don't you come here and stand with these pretty girls, okay? Okay, yo. Go over and stand right over by that white cabinet. All right. Number five, buddy. Number five. Why don't you come right over here with this pretty girl? Ben, come here by Kate. You ready? Are you going to do it? All right. Go over and stand by Kate. You go stand by Kate. Hey, Kate. And we got a lot of Caden. Do y'all know that? I mean, Caden's not that popular. We've done, I've been called it off three times. Go over and stand by those pretty girls. Brianna, go over there with those. Hey, Dylan, you stand right here. How many have I got? Shayna, stand right here with these. Dylan, you're over here, son. Go where you're supposed to go now. Katie, come right over here. I don't think you'll make it. Nah, I'm just kidding. Go right over with those guys. I tell you what, Nick, you go right there with Dylan. You go right here with them. Brittany, come right here with these. Boy, we're getting all together, aren't we? No better than bunch up. Bunch up. Come on, Jay. Come right over there with them. You're pretty, but you know what? You still got to be on the team, right? She's an archerist, I guess is what you call it. Go right over to the far. To, no, stop there with Caden and Katie and Ben. There you go. Can you do it? I thought you could. Go ahead. Right. Bentley, are you up to this? You sure you've been sick, but you're feeling better? All right. Go way over, all the way to the far side. I tell you what, buddy, you go on over here with them too. You thought she was going to be the last, but not least, right? Isn't she a beautiful girl? Man, we've got some nice kids in this church. Here, you go right here. Now. Every one of y'all been chosen now, right? Is there anybody we haven't chosen? Lennon. Just, oh, she, I scared her. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare her. I'm sorry, Lennon. I'm sorry. You're still my buddy. Still my buddy. All right, we've got all these. We got four groups, right? Where's the Where's the break right here? Okay, y'all step on over. Now where's the break right here? Jay, you with you're over here, right? Okay. Where's the break over here? You know we we're we're constantly worried about where we belong, right? That's a constant thing. That's, that's an everyday part of our life. What group do I fit in? Right? What part do I play? Who do I hang with? Who am I most like? Right? Sometimes we feel completely disconnected from everybody. Sometimes, do you mind me using you for an example? Sometimes we feel like everybody else is over there we're over here left out. Right? You can go ahead and go back. Let me get through here. I got to get up here to the scripture. I want to read a verse. I'll just keep standing here. Stay with your group. Stay with your group. It's important. Peter was writing and he said, Ye are a chosen generation. Has anybody not been chosen tonight? Every one of you have been chosen. Tonight you were chosen by me. But I want you to know 
the time that you felt the convicting power of God and the drawing of his spirit, you were chosen of God. Amen. And we spend most of our time worried about how that we can blend in and fit in when we're chosen to be different. Amen. That's what it says. Ye are chosen generation. A royal priesthood. And holy nation. A peculiar people. Katie, you're peculiar. But it's okay. Because I am too. Brittany, you're unique. There's nobody else in the world like you. But don't forget you're chosen. And never feel left out. Because you're chosen. All y'all can say down. These guys are going to have to stand up. We gotta, we, they're going to help me preach tonight. Never feel left out because you're chosen. It may not be in the most popular clique at school, but I'd rather be chosen by God as chosen for the baseball team. Come on. I'd rather be chosen by God than to be chosen by any other group that there is. It does set you apart because being chosen by him makes you a peculiar people. I quickly read to us from Deuteronomy chapter uh, 7. It says, for thou, this was God addressing the children of Israel, God's people. You're, you're chosen by God. You're on God's team now, okay? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people, I told you, it's okay to be chosen. It's okay to be peculiar. Because he says, above all people upon the face of the earth. Yeah, you're in the elite. You're in, are you not going to school this fall? God help that boy. But we're chosen and peculiar, but he puts his people above everything else. They didn't have a clue what I was going to preach tonight. Brother Keith, Brother John both got up and started singing. Brother John said, this world is not. My firm and it dwell in. All this stuff down here don't matter. Because they started singing that song, most of all, <laughs> I want to see him. It's good to be popular in your group, so to speak. But none of that's going to matter as long as you see him. Amen. Now we got four groups. Everybody get into your group again. I need to get back down here. Let me through. Let me through. Y'all bunch up. All right. We're going to do delay. I don't want nobody hurt. We're going to run a race. Y'all never. Y'all thought y'all got out of running the aisles. All the other people run the aisles, but y'all going to run the aisles. All right. Now, yeah, you probably want to. You probably don't want to be in the hills, but we're going to run a race. Now we're not trying. We're not trying to be the fastest. Remember. So we're going we're gonna to wait and we're going to do it in timely manner, okay? But I want group one. We're going to run around the outside of the church. All right? Go ahead and start running. Go. Go. Put your shoes down start running. All right? Group two, go. Go. Be careful. Don't run over each other. Group three, don't run over each other. Go ahead and go. Group four. All right, let's go. Be careful, run. Now you're running a race. You've been chosen to run a race. Now here you go, you're running. 
Don't stop. It don't matter if you're going the fastest or the slowest. Just keep running. Keep running. Oh, somebody snag. Don't let this boy run. Come on, let him run. There was a snag and somebody called him. Did you see that? Run, run. Be, don't stop. Wait a minute. They're jumping over. There's stuff over here. Do you realize, kids, that you're in this race when God chose you and he put you in this race towards heaven, towards eternity? And I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be the easiest race you've ever run. Keep running. Don't stop. Keep running. You're on a race. Go, go. Keep going. You're in a race. And I'm not going to tell you there won't be obstacles in your way. I'm not going to tell you there won't be trials that comes against you. I'm not going to tell you that you're going to make it all easy peasy. But I'm telling you one thing. You just can't quit. Keep running the race. Keep going at the race. Keep going forward. Don't get caught by the distractions. Keep going. I'm not done. Y'all just keep going on the race. Keep on going. I want you to understand tonight. God didn't choose you to be a quitter. God didn't choose you to be a backsider. God didn't choose you to blend in with everybody else. But God chose you to finish the race. God chose you to be an overcomer. God chose you to make a marked difference in this world. I can't tell you that there won't be snares. I know there'll be things that will reach and grab you and try to keep you from doing it. But I tell you, dodge the bullets. Keep running. Dodge the pitfalls and keep going. Come on, we need some people that's made up their mind. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep running this race. Don't quit. Don't quit. I know you're running a race. But listen to me real closely tonight. The writer of Hebrews said it like this. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Look around you, young people. Keep running. Keep going. But look around you. There's been people that has made it. There's witnesses of people that has overcome. There's witnesses all on this church house and in our families that has persevered. They haven't quit. I can't tell you it's been easy for them either. But all I can say is just keep going. They, we look around with such a great cloud of witness. And he said, let us lay aside every weight. If there's something in your life that's hindering you from running, I'm telling you, go ahead and get rid of it. Throw it away. Lay it down. Because there's a race that you've started on. There's a race that you're in. And don't get sidetracked by the weights of this world. But lay it aside and run the race with patience. I understand there's distractions. Keep going. I understand that there's problems. I know how real peer pressure is. Come on. But I'm here tonight to tell you, you can't succumb to the pressures of this world and expect to hear him say, well done. There'll be kids that's saying things at school that you shouldn't be hearing. I say just avoid those pitfalls and keep on the race. There'll be kids at school doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing. I tell you, don't hang out with those people. Lay aside those weights and keep running the race. Come on. There'll be places that you have the opportunity to go. There'll be things that you have the opportunity to do. But I tell you, young people, don't get distracted by the things of this world. Just stay on the course. Stay on the course. Keep running the race. Don't quit. You may get tired. You may slow down. But don't quit. There's a lot of things that will come against you. But let me reassure you of one thing. You're not the first one that's been on this course. You won't be the last one that's been on this course. 
And I just tell you, avoid the pitfalls of Satan and just keep running. Just keep going. Keep running the race. I realize, can I be real plain? I'm, I'm, while you're running the race, y'all listen close. One of the things that sets us apart is our holiness. Come on. But I stand here tonight to tell you, modest is still the hottest. And just because everybody else is showing all of their junk don't mean you need to show yours. Don't give in to the pressures, just stay the course. Don't give in to the distraction, just stay the course. Hear me this night. You may wear the longest dress in the world, but if it's so tight that it's showing everything, it's still not modest. And it will get you off the course. It'll get you off the path. Same thing goes for your guys. It's just as bad for you to be wearing too tight stuff and revealing too much. I'm telling you, it's time for us to be peculiar. Holy. Come on. God didn't call us out of the world to be like the world. He called us out of the world so that we could run a race set before us and run it to the finish. I realize, come on, keep running the race. I realize the world of technology is a downfall to so many people. Come on, the world of technology will get so many people, but I'm telling you, lay it aside. Don't get caught up in the world of technology and let it destroy your soul because this thing right here can send you to hell just as quick as anything else. I'm telling somebody in this house, lay it aside and keep running the race. I also understand probably 85 is very conservative. 85% of these kids in this race has all got one of these right here. Can I tell you something? Snapchat can destroy you. Lay it aside. Keep running the race. Come on. Instagram can cause you all kinds of problems. I say just lay it aside and keep running the race. Come on. Facebook Messenger, texting, Late night phone calls can all be detrimental to your soul. I say lay aside those weights. Get rid of them out of your life. But run this race with patience because God's called you and chosen you. I also understand that it looks as if tobacco is cool. Can I tell you, tobacco ain't cool. Alcohol don't make you hip, it makes you drunk and foolish. Drugs aren't the end thing, drugs are the deadly thing. Come on, get rid of those things. Get rid of those things, lay aside those weights. Lay aside those things that will so easily beset you. Hear me tonight. I don't care if everybody in the school's doing it. It don't matter to me if everybody in your youth group's doing it. I'm still telling you sin is sin. Wrong is always gonna be wrong. And wrong will never be right. Come on, keep going around the race. I know you're not going as fast as you was going. I understand that. But keep going on the race because quitters never win. And winners never quit. There's a race that's set before you and the prize at the end is worth the endurance. The prize at the end is worth the struggle. The prize at the end will make it worthwhile 
Just keep running the race. Hear me. I don't care what they teach you in school. It doesn't matter to me what they tell you and hand out to you. Fornication is still a sin and it's not to be had among the young people of the church of the living God. Come on. But you'll find that there'll be relationships that will be distractions to you. There'll be careers that will be distractions to you. There'll be family problems that'll be distractions to you. God forbid, but there will even be church problems that will be a distraction to you. But I say get rid of those distractions. Get rid of those sins. Get rid of those weights. And run this race with patience. Keep going. Listen to me, young people. I want you to understand something. There's a lot of people in our modern culture in our modern society that will try to tell you that there's other ways of doing it, that all this is not necessary. And they'll try to stop you. Let me use you for an example. Y'all keep running, but pay attention. They'll try to send you down a shortcut. Come on. They'll try to send you down a path that's easier. It don't have all the obstacles in its path. They'll try to put you in a direction that's unbeknownst to what God had for you. But I tell you, there ain't no shortcuts to heaven. You can't find but one way. And it's straight is the way. Narrow is the way. You may be among the few, but just be glad because there's few that find it. But wide is the path that leads to destruction. And many people goes down that path. Run your race. Run your race. Run your race. You can't afford to quit. You can't afford to stop. You may have to slow down. There may be times in this race that it's easy peasy to live for God. Anybody have problems serving God at youth camp? It's easy to serve God at youth camp, isn't it? It's not hard to serve God at Sunday school. Come on. It's not difficult to serve God sitting in the church house. But then I can't tell you that every day is going to be like Sunday school. Every week is not going to be like youth camp. There's going to be some days where it looks like every step you take is filled with struggles. Come on. Every move you make, there's another obstacle in front of you. There's something else in your path. There's another hardship there. There's something else that's reaching to grab at you and to pull at you. It seems like every move you make, the devil's there trying to fight you. He's trying to stop you in your track. He'll do everything he can. But listen to me, young people. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't lose, throw in the towel. Just keep running the race. Keep going. Keep pressing on. Hear me. The writer to Ecclesiastes said it like this. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Yet, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. Every one of you have an opportunity in this battle. Every one of you has an opportunity to win. Hear me tonight. There's going to be times, come here, let me borrow you, Cato. There's going to be times, fall down for me, that you're going to fall down. It's going to happen. I wish it didn't. But there's going to be times that you fall down on this race. And as the writer said, when I fall, I shall arise. Your failures don't have to be fatal. But when you fall down, I say get yourself back up. Dust yourself off and keep going on the race. Keep running the race. Keep going forward. It's not about quitting. 
It's about winning. Run the race. Run the race. I know tonight it seems crazy. They have thrown chairs in your path. They throw clothes in your path. They throw shoes in your path. And sometimes it will feel like all hell is turned loose against you and you can't go forward. But I've come tonight to tell you, don't give up. There's still a church that cares about you. There's still a church that loves you. There's still a church that's gonna pull for you. There's still an altar that's not too far. It's always in the path of the race. Don't be a stranger to the altar. I say find an altar. Talk to God when you're weak, when you're weary. Find an altar and pray and God will give you strength. Just keep running the race. I realize sometimes it gets hard and we get slow. Katie, we just get to where we're barely going. And it don't sing, I'll keep running. Barely can crow. Our pace is slowed to a snail's pace. There's so many obstacles there. So many different challenges there. We find ourselves maneuvering in and out, hoping to get a breakthrough. Let me tell you something, church, when you see a young person struggling on this race, don't you leave them out in the cold. <laughs> When you see a young person that's just fighting for survival, don't you leave them out in the cold. It's time we as a church partner up with them and start cleaning the path out in our prayer time. It's time we start picking up the things out of their life to just to make it a little easier for them so that they can finish the race, so that they can finish the course. It's time for ministers to step up and start helping them along the way. It's time for mamas and daddies to go Go ahead and push the plate back and fast and pray for your children. Listen to me, it's our responsibility as a church to do everything we can to help our young people finish the race. When you see a brother stumble, when you see a friend fall, when you see someone struggle, how about having enough compassion to partner up with them? Come on. Is there anybody in the house tonight that cares enough about our young people to partner up with them? Is there anybody in the house that really cares that says, hey, I'll walk a mile with you? Come on. Is there anybody that really has a heart enough to leave my comfort of my chair and my seat and my strong problems and say, hey, let me partner up with one of our young people so that we can make it easier for them. Come on. They're dependent upon you. They need your help. They need your prayer. They need your guidance. They need your mentorship. Come on. We shouldn't have a young person in this journey right now. If it takes two, go ahead, put two, but we should have somebody with everybody because you know what? They're that important to us. If you haven't got enough zeal, and I'm talking to us right now, the adults, to fight hell for our young people. I challenge you just to take a moment and look at the news and see what the devil is doing wrecking havoc in every one of their lives. Come on. So you know what, young people? We're in this thing together. Keep running the race. You've got partners with you now. It's easier to find your way. It's easier to go around the obstacles. It's easier when you fall to get somebody to help you up. Come on, when you've got somebody with you, it makes a difference. You can go ahead. When you get back to the front, you can start stopping because we're gonna pray again over these young people. Just stay up here with your, if you're running a race with them, adults, come on. 
Come on, stay with your, stay with your partners. Stay with the people that you're running with. Come on. Come on, let's finish up the race. Come on. Partner up with your partners. Oh, God. You're in this race together. Hear me. Young people, listen real close to what I'm listening to say. Never feel like you're alone. Never feel like that you're in this battle by yourself. One of the main tools the devil does is he isolates you to where you feel like nobody can understand my struggles. Nobody cares about what I'm dealing with. Nobody knows the pain that I suffer from. That's what the devil tries to put in your mind. But hear me tonight. That's a lie. That's a lie. Yes, you're a chosen people. You're a peculiar people. You're a holy people. You don't blend in with the world, but you blend in with us. You blend in with the church. You don't party like everybody else, but you can worship with us. places that they go but you can go with the church group hear me church listen to me it's important that we provide safe places safe events it's important that we provide activities that are centered for our young people so that they can have something to do because I'm telling you the vices of this world will destroy them with alcoholism. The vices of this world will destroy them with promiscuity. The vices of this world will destroy them with addiction. But I've come tonight to tell you, the church will help you along the way. And you can hear him say, well done. The race may not be to the swiftest. Thank God I would have got lost real quick thank God it ain't to the fastest it may not even be to the strongest cause you know what every one of us have weak times in our life hear me the prize is worth it Matthew chapter 10 it says it like this do not grow weary and well do it for in due season shall reap. <laughs> Excuse me, I think Matthew says it like this. He that endure to the end. I got two verses back to there. The same shall be saved. He that endureth to the end. The same shall be saved. Nothing on this world is going to matter except to hear him say, Nothing else is going to matter. Every obstacle that you have had to jump will be worth it. Every weight that you've had to lay down will be worth it. Every trial that you've had to battle will be worth it. Just to hear him say, well done. Can we pray again? God in heaven. I know the tempter. I know the adversary. I know the devil wants to wreak havoc in our youth, in our children, in our young people. Tonight I'm asking you to give us all the strength to endure, the patience to finish the course, the ability to withstand. Lord, give us the ability to shirk off the things of this world and to cleave unto you and to righteousness and to holiness and to godliness. You called us 
for this hour, for this time, for this moment. Help us, Lord, to take a stand for righteousness, even in this present world. Help us not to be caught in the traps of Satan. Help us not to be distracted by the cares of this life, but help us to run this race. Help us to run this race. everybody back in the same group where you went you're not because you know why I did that on purpose we were all chosen but we all run our race at a different pace we're not going to be at the same pace as everybody else I couldn't keep up with Caden and Ben there's no way I could keep up with Mallory there's no way I could do it but you know what? At the end, all that's going to matter is that we were chosen by Him. It don't matter what group you started with. It don't matter what group you got involved with. It just all matters that you finish the race. Stay the course. There will be easy religion that will come knocking on your door be people that even quits in the race that can easily become a distraction to you but you can't quit just because they did you got to keep running there will be families that has all kinds of issues that will cause you mental anguish and problems turmoil and it would be easy just to throw in the towel and say it ain't worth it but you can't let that destroy you just stay the course. Stay the course. Quitting is not an option. And whatever you have to do to get to the prize, it'll be worth it. There really is a heaven. And you have to run this race to get there. There really is a hell. And those quitters wind up kids are tired as I am. Yes, tonight is senior night. I, I understand. I don't like it. You don't keep it from happening. Senior night is going to be this week at all of our other schools. And you know what? It's hardly without a year that goes by that in our surrounding area on these senior nights where they get out and they hang out all night long and I'm wondering where their mamas and daddies are just because you become a senior in high school and this is a different sermon for a different day but just because you become a senior in high school don't give you the license to go crazy and it don't give mom and daddy the license to quit being parents amen it don't but I say this there's hardly a senior night that goes by throughout the years in our area that there's not some kind of horrible tragedy. But I believe God can give us protection, don't you? In the name of Jesus, right now I ask for your hand upon every one of those seniors. God, before they partake in the craziness, let them be reminded of your love. Before they partake in the activities that they shouldn't participate in, God, I ask that you bring conviction to them. Put your protection upon them. Let us see your handiwork. God will give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Young people, the prize is worth it. Keep running the race. Thank you for being here tonight. Wednesday night we'll have church at 7 o'clock. Come expecting great things. You're